yeah. no record. I you don't have to tell me private. why. You don't okay, have to tell like, Mark why. You don't have to tell me why. You don't have to tell Mark that, why. that you're doing. I have to, I'm you know what I'm doing right now. I'm sitting, my rear is in my seat, my seat is in the seat. One foot is on an amplifier. The other mm. foot is on the floor, which is covered in some kind of cork board, but it's gotten all screwed up, but I can't do anything about it because I have heavy desks and stuff on it. Is the amplifier making your foot louder? No, it's not. Is the amplifier on. making your foot louder? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you ask the same question twice, you get different answers. That's how rock stars yeah. interview, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wasn't Bowie notorious for that telling completely different contradicting stories in different interviews? I I think <laughs> so, yeah. I don't think he's the only one that does that or did that or whatever. <laughs> mm. Um well. Guys ready to get I, into this. I can do a thing. I'm gonna look at my notes, I guess. I got some notes here. Oh, notes. Oh notes. I forgot to send my notes. That's twice okay. In a row. I, I don't read your notes, so hmm. I just sent, I like I, reading notes. That, well, funny. that's why they get sent. So here's an excerpt <laughs> from my notes. Suddenly, a gorilla is fighting a mummy, just like in the Bible. Mm. <laughs> Which book is that in? The book of Gorilla v Mummy. Book of Shut the fuck up. That's that's what. Do, book do you do you actually read my notes? <laughs> No, of, I skim them if I well, I because you said several time. things last time that were in my notes. <laughs> that, that sounds like you okay. I notes. didn't skim your notes last time, I don't think so. Yeah, that was no. Totally... Matt said so. He said something about it, um, the love test being like it was a 60s Batman villain plot, and I had that in my notes. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Well, it was, <laughs> yeah. Well, well, great minds think alike, and apparently, so do ours. Mm. But uh, yeah, yeah it's kind of like a yeah, like you know, some people like to read them. So you know, here's the option of doing so. Also, just you know, a nice little reminder. I mean, you didn't need it because we did this talked about this yesterday. But uh, you know, in other cases, it seems useful to send notes just as a little like, hey, you know, what's going on? We're about to do this. Have have some notes. Mm. <laughs> I have a funny line from this one. I don't know. I I, I make sure to get I know what line. line. I know what line I think is funny. Well, let's. I guess let's do that on air then, because I, I I made sure to get at least one <laughs> quote down directly. So I I have two quotes down directly. Okay, y'all get to banging now is probably not a quote actually from the show. Um, but then I got two <laughs> other ones. <laughs> Dude, we were all, all about right. to bang. What's up with you? Capital Y on the U. I I think I made that quote too. Okay. Uh, yeah. I should probably turn this fan off so you don't hear this. <laughs> Yeah, next to me. Also. No, I think I think Zoom's gotten pretty good at the noise cancellation because on Mission Log, dude, they're always like, "Oh, there's a truck." I'm like, "I don't need a fucking truck." <laughs> well, let's see. I mean, can you? Let me turn it back on again. You guys said you get to hear by clicking, clicky keyboard, right? Uh, do it a again. Bit. Like my barely. Like when my I do it, pretty clicky. Yeah, when I do it, it sounds like the world's ending. But I guess it's not. You said you didn't hear it, so I guess it doesn't matter. I'm I'm straight up. Um... Well, the thing is, I I switched to mechanical keyboard because I'm like, this will be better. It'll be a better typing experience. And I'm, I'm regretting, like, I, I'm already looking into, like, buying the, the quieter switches for it. Ah. Which is, like, another 30 or 40 bucks or something. But, like, you can buy switches that are mechanical switches that are silent. So I'm like, oh, I got this giant mouse. It's really big. That doesn't seem that big. It says it's XL. It has trackball. My my previous keyboard oh, like blue light. Blue my previous LED. keyboard, the uh the um my previous keyboard, the charging port fell off. So I mm. threw it in the trash mm. instead of trying to fix it because fixing it's too hard. I threw it on the ground. Threw it in the well, it it's discontinued, so basically you can only buy shitty batteries for it. Okay. I bought so, a, uh, <laughs> I bought an adapter yesterday for my uh synthesizer so i don't have to use the battery all the time but now i don't know where i put the adapter oh well i'll find it eventually it's mm. in this room somewhere <laughs> oh yeah i meant to bring that thing over here oh well it's some other time some other time i'll show it to you but... it's like this and then i got this mouse pad which i just can't it's it's really beat up it's not a useful mouse pad anymore but it's uh i can't throw this away ganesha can't, can't yeah. throw ganesha away yeah you can just put it on your wall why not 
Because it's too beat up and ugly for that. <laughs> but if the Buddha was beat up and ugly, you wouldn't put you would put him on your wall. Mm. Mm. I don't remember how that shit works. <laughs> If you throw the Buddha away because he's beat up and ugly, then you'll be cursed. And, mm. and I don't think they have curses in Buddhism. Shinto might maggots. have some curses. Mm-hmm. Maggots are falling like rain. Yes, maggots will fall like rain. <laughs> Sorry, where were we? You should do an intro or something. I was also thinking about... Anyway, yeah. Welcome to Podcast 1999, the podcast about Space 1999. I'm your new Adam... Mark, new Adam. I'm your new Eve, Matt. I'm your new gorilla, Brian. There we go. Everyone's covered. Uh, thought you're going to be Magus, but I guess nobody's Magus. No, are you ready? <laughs> no one wants to Magus. be Magus. Are you ready to meet your Magus? Yep. Okay. I am. <laughs> yes, it is new Adam, new Eve. Um, so some nice god complex, a a mustache to kill. Almost this literally. just goes to show you that somebody shows up and they act like a god, you know, dress for the job you want. Yeah. I mean, let's face it. <laughs> they're like, oh, he's only a cosmic magician. Well, I mean, that's pretty close to do. That's at least like, um, you know, Squire Gotha Sky or what was his name or Q yeah, or Trelane. He has like Trelane yeah. like powers. And, and yeah. they're like Trelane, it, it seems like there's some sort of well business behind it. But yeah, it's interesting. It, it doesn't make any sense Magus that they wouldn't be afraid of him, actually. Mm-hmm. It doesn't make sense they wouldn't be afraid of him. Just because he is not like the Christian God who created all humans, they're suddenly like, this guy's a schmuck. I'm not afraid of this guy. He absolutely could kill everyone. He had no he had no issue just murdering everyone, splattering them into blood splatters. He just Yeah, they've already met Baylor. To... Fool me once, yeah. you know? I mean, <laughs> he's yeah, he's not as Balor was not as scary as this guy. He was not as powerful. This is a very powerful being. Uh, and and basically the that Koenig has plot armor that is so insane <laughs> that if he decides this guy's a schmuck, then they're gonna get him. He's got claws one fourth the size of the earth. <laughs> well, Balor was <laughs> actually pretty psychopathic. This guy just seems I don't know. Not quite that bad. Sociopathic, maybe. I don't know. Mm. I don't have a He's... scale to measuring these things. He doesn't have an <laughs> urge to kill Rising, as we've recently seen with the Mark of Arcanon, the Ark of Markanon. He's just a a startup. He has a startup that he wants to do that's impractical. And he doesn't care how many people he kills to do it. <laughs> so, oh, so, he... so this actually is a perfect um, microcosm of late 90s life then with the failed startup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah failed wow. startup swingers um well, I, I put it to galactic key party mutants yeah there's that, that too. <laughs> is I like it a key the, party uh... if there's a force field between you and you and the other people is that a, <laughs> is that a party i like that you mentioned uh pask i mean we can have uh dueling uh facial hair between those two, you know, my mustache versus your beard. Uh, I think I think Pass wins in the end because it's so oily and greasy, yeah. and it looks like it's been molded onto his face. This is just like a whack ass uh, mustache, you know. It just seems yeah, he, full he has Salvador this, Dali. Yeah. Uh, uh, Magus just has this depressed guy energy. He just seems just kind of bored and kind of boring, but. He does appear in the sky and shoot lasers out of his eyes and his disembodied head, which was the coolest thing I've ever seen in the show. Hmm. Um, you want to do some trivia on the show? Okay, let's do it. Trivia for this show. This week's episode is 10th in production order for season two. In Martin Landau scribble notes update, he noted that he thought Koenig was too harsh towards Magus in this episode before arriving on New Earth. Not, not that fun, really. An update. Uh, the creatures in the caves were originally going to be stop motion, but it was determined that was too expensive and too time consuming. I cannot imagine stop motion being in this. Just not been any stop motion in the show. So that's a, oh, I thought a weird it was very story. Harryhausen with the Gila monsters, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, new Adam, new Eve, new writer. Terrence Feely was born in 1928 and worked his way up to the position of foreign story head at Paramount in the 60s before quitting that job to be co-director of Everyman Films with Patrick McGowan and David Tomlin, the latter being a previous Space 1999 director 
and the former being the star of The Prisoner, which Feely himself wrote two episodes for, The Schizoid Man and The Girl Who Was Death, both of which I really enjoyed. Check out our podcast about it, Imprisoned in Prison, on uh, the Prisoner Prison cast. It's been so uh, long for, since you tried saying that. As for, I did it. I, Almost. For Feely himself. I said feeling himself again. Uh, you can also see his writing in Terror Stalks the Class Reunion, the Dick Francis thriller, The Racing Game, and Company and Company. That's the second company is CO period. Hmm. Um, he passed away in 2000, but we'll see his work one more time or two more times in Space 1999, depending on how you want to count our two-part episode this season. Returning as director, we have Charles Crichton. We last saw his work on The Mark of Arcanon. He'll be back for two more episodes this season. Our primary guest star this week is Guy Rolf as Magus. Born in 1911, he spent his 20s as a professional race car driver and boxer before making his stage debut in 1936, which gradually led to more on-screen credits, some of which include Snow White and the Three Stooges. And now the screaming starts. And a stint as titular Puppet Master Andre Toulon in Puppet Masters 3, 4, and 5, as well as Retro Puppet Master, which were his final four credits as he passed away in 2003 at the age of 91. Uh, Bernard K. plays the mutant credited as Humanoid. Born in 1928 in Bolton, Lancashire, England, he had a long career with a resume as impressive as any of our Space 1999 guest stars. You can see him in Dr. Zhivago, Doctor Who, Doctors, The Doctors, General Hospital, Witchfinder General, and 32 episodes of Emmerdale Farm. His final credit was 2010's Psychosis, and then he passed away in 2014. The one quote on his IMDb page reads, One of the things all actors have to do all the time is to make rubbish sound reasonable. As the lizard man that Maya turns into, we have Albin Paternick. I don't have much info on him aside from the fact that you can see him in films such as Fiddler on the Roof, What's Up Nurse, and Oh Heavenly Dog, and he'll be back in five more Space 1999 episodes as various creatures and animals, some of which are Maya. Finally, in an uncredited role as Ape Man, we have Terry York. He was born in 1926 and was an actor and stuntman who appeared in two episodes of The Prisoner, playing a thug and a horseman. But also in Casino Royale, you know which one, uh, You Can't Win Them All, and Superman 2, which was one of his last credits before he passed away in 2003. This is his only appearance in Space 1999. And that's the trivia. I'm sorry, which Casino Royale was that? You know which one. <laughs> No, I'm going to keep doing this bit. No, the the no, one no. made before he died, <laughs> I would imagine. Yeah. He was not the one after he died, right? <laughs> they just, I mean, yeah, they, you they can put shoot him... the footage before he died. You know, you stockpile that. They used AI to put him in the one that was 2010 or whatever it was. Uh, 06, I believe. Probably, yeah, yeah, it was not 2010. It was 06. But... Okay, I got a story for you and you and you. Wait, Alpha begins. Re- what? Uh, there's oh, a listener. There's a listener. Oh, mm-hmm. hi, listener. Sorry, I forgot you existed. Alpha begins receiving weird psychedelic signals that violently mesmerize multiple members of the crew. Turns out that it's just God or Magus if you're nasty. He whisks Koenig, Helena, Tony, and Maya off to a new Earth, a second chance, if you will. Of course, Magus has to be an Rs, pairing them off in the wrong way and enforcing it with heavy static electricity or something. But our Alphans work out the problem encounter mutants, and get a feel for Magus's machinations. Turns out Magus is a cosmic magician, not a god, and he needs light. Thus, the Alphans build a dark tiger pit trap to cut him off from his supply. Magus's power was also holding the planet together, and it begins to pull itself apart. Koenig and crew make it to their eagle in time. The mutants taste the sweet relief of death, and Magus is hopefully vanquished. Meanwhile, Alan Carter can't get it up, like his eagle won't rise. Okay, that's the story. I hate it when my eagle won't rise. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm i like, Nick Tay, just stay on your ski trip, man. <laughs> he still seems like he's in a good mood because he gets He, he didn't time. have a lot to do, but I guess plot-wise, Alan was actually distracting Magus enough for them to do other things, like build tiger pits. Yeah, he was like he the B-plot. breaking the sweat trying to keep Alan Siegel from taking off. He, he was doing the B-plot of just like... <laughs> with the car I like engine, how they you know? used an establishing shot of the eagle that's way outside the base, you know, that research place where the exiles were. 
they use that as an establishing shot. And then for the rest of the time, he's back on a regular launch pad. And I'm like, why'd they even show that other eagle? <laughs> That's not where the eagle is. <laughs> but we should also note, okay, in this episode, it's one more eagle down. Uh, yes, we mine, have one mine. eagle down. And, and two more sections of Moonbase Alpha, which must be running out of sections at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if those were just stock footage of other sections of Alpha exploding from year one. or if it Yeah, was I guess if it's the same section. Yeah, it, it just blew up the same section twice, so it's fine. Oh, it, and you know they had some leftover... Me... They had some leftover crevices from uh, Texas City that they blew up. You know, they just added some trees to it this time. <laughs> <laughs> it made me absolutely insane when one of the sections blew up. And then it cuts to Yasuko being like, why? And Alan says, maybe he needed to put pressure on John. Like, we know that. And how would they know that? <laughs> like, why is, why is this structured like this? What's the uh, anyway. valid question? Why the, Why is he suddenly blowing up the base? Well, when was the last time that happened? Well, oh, let's to put see. Pressure oh, on Mentor. John, but... When Mentor yeah. was putting pressure on John. So it kind of made sense. Yeah, <laughs> it's always putting pressure they on John. They should expect this by now, especially when weird, to... omnipotent beings show Random up. I mean, he's... Ex- Explosions, yeah. Megas mm-hmm. was nice enough to show up on, you know, in com, uh, command, whatever. So uh, everyone knows who he is. He, he did properly introduce himself. We have to give him that. He's a good and he's very good at introductions, except that it'll give you, they might give you a headache at first. Yep. He so might harsh you your guys, buzz. You guys think this would be better if Maya turned into a guy and it had been new Adam, new Steve? Well, I was thinking the, the, um, Koenig and Tony and then Maya and Helena didn't have the static problem, so they, they could go about that if they wanted to. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, it works out that way. They can touch members of the other couple, but not each other. Yeah. I, so they, I hate they do, that the they, closest... They have a I, choice. I feel like the closest thing we've had to real character development this season is building up to Tony and Helena kissing and Maya and Koenig kissing. which <laughs> <laughs> didn't really amount to anything. Right. And they were well, I knew you were waiting for that, Mark. You were waiting for this whole thruple thing for all season long. I mean, and I was thinking, okay, this is the episode Mark's gonna love. <laughs> it paid off. What can I say? Megas' plan off. was starting to work. It was starting to work, and then he's like, you know, and then he's like, oh, nope, I'm gonna screw around with y'all more. It's like they were he, they were about to do what he wanted. <laughs> no, it was the 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 intestine the man fighting yeah, the yeah, monkey on man. the other, yeah. yeah. Also, that, I, that's that's false advertising. It's, I will give you a planet, and then they go there, and he's like, "Okay, stay within the rocks." Like what? And and also, it's a quarter the size of Earth. So, like, well, that, what a lousy that's fine. Planet. That's the size of the moon. That actually kind of played into the plot, though, <laughs> because it turned out, yeah, the moon, the gravity, the whole instability of it. It's like, okay, that makes sense. But if it's a quarter the size of the moon, how come they aren't like bouncing around in the light gravity like they are in the moon? <laughs> well, it turns out that all you have to do is set a simple trap in the woods, which I believe. When was the last time we saw a trap like that? Was it the full circle? Didn't well, that yeah. happen in that? Because Alan was hanging out in there for a while. Yeah, so that same trap will will capture this cosmic magician and destroy the whole planet because he can't be in the dark and mm. he can't fly. Mm. So the only way they could beat him was to think primitive. Remember that was that that was the whole. Crux and then of the marimbas argument. come in on the soundtrack at that point. I did notice that. If, They're like, if let's they think like... primitive. It's like. It's like, oh come on! <laughs> if they blindfolded him, would that have worked? You think that would have worked? If they put a bag over his head, would that work? No, I, I think the skin contact to the light will also power him. Hmm. You know, they could well, have just moved into the caves with all the mutants and just stayed there, and he would never have been able to do anything about them because he could never come in after yeah. them. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. They seemed very nice. They're they so nice. Cult- that- yeah, he had a very cultured English accent. That one mutant. <laughs> I don't know where he got it from, but there you go. I laughed Megas so don't create hard. no trash. At the end, I, I, mean, I guess this is jumping ahead, but I laughed so hard when he tried to save him. And he said, no, no, thank you. Go. <laughs> yeah. Ah. <laughs> like, like, screaming politely. I have death complex. Screaming. I must die. Thanks anyway. Yeah. Good night. There's, yeah, there's, it was very strange. We, we need to show. have the lower decks episode of. I mean, they didn't take the mutants with them, but we need the lower decks episode of um, Space 1999, where there's a a back room where the where the table and Brian the Brain and the mutants are all now like roommates. You know, well, like maybe kind of a... season five will have that. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> well, Who else um, do we still have bouncing around on the moon at this point? That how cover... like a nice big glass of protein. Is that protein? What? Sure. Just say it's wine. Umami. It's a <laughs> look, umami look, it drink. looks like looks like mead. He says pure protein, and I'm like, that sounds dreadful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a pure umami. 
I had curry drink last year. It's actually pretty good. Curry drink. Curry drink. Is it drink. sweet at all? Not really. It was mm. curry. Mm. Well, I mean, you could put sugar in curry. Well, yeah, you but could. Yeah. anyway, like it sounds a like a, uh, you could also get uh, what can what can you get? You can get um clam drink. Yeah. Well, I guess we got clamato. Are these the hot it's not that weird. or cold? Hot. Nah. Yeah. A cold. I think it would probably be terrible. Oh, okay. It's only in the machine yeah, for like three it. weeks. Now it's gone. <laughs> I'll t- I'd I'd try the curry drink, maybe not the clam drink, but who, who the hell knows? I love chowder. So now would you would, would you go for the protein drink? He's like, you don't have to eat for two weeks after, but eating's fun. Sure, right? yeah. yeah. Why not? I mean, two, see, that's we, not how the human body works, though. They can't. That's impossible. Is that like that Soylent? That, that 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 energy drink Soylent that you just eat <laughs> one, drink one, and it's a whole meal. Or I yeah. as as someone who's terrible with time management, I have used Soylent a few times, and it does work. It hits the spot, but you can't drink enough Soylent that it'll last you two weeks. That's not how the human body metabolizes. Right. It's going to metabolize what it can, and the rest is going to go we'll on. Die. Through. So, <laughs> die. Yeah. So ultimately, there are Genesis planet problems with this new Earth uh, as it flies yep. apart at the end of the episode. Um, before that, though, it didn't seem like the worst deal because they're like. We're gonna go in our own way. What back to crappy old Earth? That's a tell hole now. Like, might as well take <laughs> New Earth. I mean, Magus isn't wrong that like in the timeline of Space nineteen ninety nine, they've completely screwed up the Earth, right? So humanity does deserve no, to die I mean, for destroying their well, planet. I, I don't want to live, live on a there. planet that as soon as Magus leaves it, it's going to explode. <laughs> right, right. I'm, I'm, I'm taking out that caveat. That's obviously a problem. So erase that bit. But other, I'm just saying the initial suggestion. They, they're so against it, but it doesn't the initial suggestion seems like it might be a good idea uh the, in the end it would not have been a good idea of course that's the plot armor mm-hmm. i suppose but yeah that's that's koenig is always right but <laughs> yeah although um, god versus a blaster that was that was a bad call it's, uh, it, would you, it's would you hold a blaster to an omnipotent being depends <laughs> Or is he, is he like, hey, you have to hook up with Maya on this planet? I mean, m- maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, and if this is a human thing, why was Maya included in the first? If place? she said, yeah, I mean, if she if she said no, then I'd shoot him. That's I guess fine. he didn't get it because later he doesn't really get the metamorph powers. Like, oh yeah, I guess you can change your things. How crazy! I didn't think about that. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> oh, I forgot. I told this out. I this forgot. To yes, I just kind of conveniently forgot about that. <laughs> It was a very, um, uh, it was a cute owl. It was like a little, little tiny owl, like yeah, a friendly nice owl. owl. Yeah. Uh, there's, but... a, there's apparently a shot in here from the rules of Luton with a falcon flying that's supposed to be the owl. <laughs> I did not catch that. Oh, that's what it was. <laughs> I think I actually <laughs> yeah. did track that, but I didn't think about it and it, and it didn't bother <laughs> me. So, but I, I do think I was like, that's not an owl, you know? <laughs> the thing I was thinking about the most was that when Tony has Maya on his arm, which I guess he's not supposed to do because there's an energy field or whatever, but maybe it's not been enacted yet. Yeah. Says, yeah. I was, scratch, I was, yeah. You he says, my you back. scratch my back. I'll scratch yours, which means nothing. I don't know what that means. Well, it's a I phrase. Was too busy. I was too busy thinking that, you know, she should be sparks flying off of her because she's touching Tony. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Apparently uh, transforming into something else magically made that whole problem go away but uh, so then she could just transform into a panther and murder magus but i guess not then then the planet would explode so it's bad and if it's a fourth um, the size of the earth does he why did he even put him next to the gorillas he could have put him somewhere else okay i've i know i've been crapping on this episode but i did like it oh no <laughs> this one was it. great this it's, is a really um, good episode we're gonna get to the hard versus soft sci-fi balance it's later, got all but, sorts uh, of cheesiness in it that's kind of hard to watch I really enjoyed it. It was silly. It was silly. That, that's the thing. If you get a scenery chewing guest star on Space 1999, you can get as dumb as you want, and it's usually pretty entertaining. <laughs> well, think about the two prisoner episodes this guy wrote, which is the one that there was a, a one of the episodes of this podcast where I was trying to remember the name of the schizoid man. Wait, no, that's a different episode. Schizoid uh, man was a, a, B, the and C with the mind machine. No, that wasn't what I was thinking of. It was the one where they had to, it was the communist one. Oh, it was like communism. Uh, the second episode. And they were going to drill in, drill in into his head. Yeah. They were going to drill into his head. Um. Anyway, no, it wasn't the second episode. <laughs> now, now, let's get, now I have to look it up. But um, the girl who was deaf specifically, 
was a very ridiculous, silly, like spy throwback episode that was one of my favorite episodes of the whole series. Oh yeah, that was just pure goofing around in the spy genre. And the I like the the bit the bar where he's like he, he, he's looking at the bottom of his glass yeah. and says, "You, you have you have been poisoned." <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's great. It's great. I love it. I lo- I loved that. That is that is probably my top top three or four favorite episodes. So I, I guess this guy's uh, just good at writing. A change like, of mind, absurd is trifles, I was of. truffles. A change of mind Trifle, is the, the psychology one. I'm okay. sorry. Mm. I'm done now. Right. <laughs> see you uh, later. Let's see what what quotes did I write down this week? Humanity oh, is have... mine. That's always good. Um, <laughs> I'll big go one... get tears in a moment. Oh, I, the okay. other one I just I just wrote a Zen quote. The more I learn, the less I know. I was like, hey, that's pretty Zen. Um, yeah, that okay. was remarkably uh, modest of him. <laughs> considering everything we've learned about him he seemed really had a modest moment that was kind of weird mm. yeah. uh, what, what's your quote mark I, i'm guessing it's oh, not what when, i wrote when koenig tells magus that he's a bungler who creates nothing but misery <laughs> it's a bungler. a bungler that's like that's something i feel like that's something that only koenig would say somehow <laughs> i like the uh what was it, a couple but i liked uh when they got through the caves and tony confronts Megas before he zaps him, he says, "Deceitful pygmies." Yeah, I, I that's I a strange like, put down. <laughs> I was like, "Is that problematic?" I don't know. Mm. <laughs> well, yeah, for if you're if, you know if you're a pygmy, I suppose that is kind of an issue. But mm. uh, but uh, what was the other one? Oh, and Maya's explaining how the uh, how his power works, and she says, "You know, all that energy." Directed simply by thought. And I said, oh, she said that very sexily. <laughs> <laughs> that was very sexily of you. <laughs> Sexually yours. <laughs> oh, no, I, oh, no, I'm sorry. It's the Roald Dahl line from uh, You Only Live Twice. She is very sexiful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, is it, that how Japanese people really talk, Roald? Really? <laughs> is, is that one of the words? Is that one of the words that they, they took out of the books last year? <laughs> <laughs> Sexiful? I don't know. It was something yeah. Tananga said. Yeah, I, I don't. Tanaka. I don't know. Uh, um, Tanaka, not Tananga. Yeah. Why uh, did I write this quote? That's the dumbest consequence of a theory of re- relativity I've ever heard. Why did I write that? <laughs> I don't remember anything about relativity. <laughs> I think when they're what? talking about how light worked or something. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, that's right. She she, she yeah. said that the reason he had his head was in the sky was because of a hologram that was traveling at the speed of light. And then she said how fast the speed of light was. Okay. That's and the it, dumbest consequence of the yeah. relativity I've ever heard. No, that was, that mm-hmm. was explaining how his implant worked. <laughs> it slows down light and then he captures the energy from the right, light and slows right. down, okay. which didn't okay. quite make sense, but it's this magical power. It's the source of his magic. He's, he's literally a wizard. Well, it's a cosmic magician. That's a wizard, right? Oh, so if this guy, wizard, different things. Yeah. If this guy's supposed to be, Yahweh, right? Basically, the creator, and he's in the sky shooting beams of light. Does that mean those are Jewish space lasers? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. This isn't a podcast where I'm allowed to say that. Be fair. I, 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 I think we've let a few fly before. I, I don't. I don't. I'm I sorry. Don't I couldn't resist that. it. I just thought, <laughs> oh, look, Jewish space lasers coming out of his you can, eyes. You can start doing some, um, you know, some Tourette syndrome rants if you really want to. I'll just start. I'll start like sharing this podcast on the eighteen and up Reddit. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, this is. I am just looking through <laughs> my know, notes here. It's not. I'm going through I, my I, notes here, and I just keep looking at things that are like goofy, though. I, I guess there's it's just so much goofiness. You notice the moment that they start falling for each other, the camera goes soft focus. Oh, like, the focus oh, yeah, was really. like. <laughs> It was like it's they like, put Vaseline on the get lens. out the Vaseline. Yeah, it was insane. Was say. Get out the <laughs> Doris Day lens, guys. Here we go. <laughs> did, did we ever find out? We okay. So he's not God. Do we ever find out how Magus knew who like May, Merlin and Nostradamus were and what Earth was? Well, Are we supposed to take guys. him at face space value that those he was telling the truth about space that? But value? I don't know if he was. Space. space I don't take him at face value, value or space value. No, well, that's just it. <laughs> Everything he says is a lie. He's saying, "Oh yeah, I was Nostradamus, and, and I was Merlin, and I was this guy, and that guy." And it's like, "Well, first you tell, say you're <laughs> this guy, and you're lying, so we're supposed to believe all this stuff." But it kind of tracks a little bit. Maybe he did come to Earth. Maybe oh. he 
was, you know, infatuated. Never with mind. We're like humanity, kind of like over Q. Now. He's kind of like Q. Well, he's like, oh, I think humans are cool. I'm going to hang out with them more. You know, or what? What is well, also with that in... with um with the the Plato's stepchildren? Is it? I mean, that's kind of what that does, right? Yeah, yeah. Like uh, the um, like he like I was Platonians or whatever and... they call them. Yeah. Now I'm over well, here. Keep in Maybe mind he was just no... one of those guys, and he just broke off from them. Yeah. I mean, Nostradamus <laughs> was a fraud, and Merlin was, I guess, just an amalgam of other fictional characters. Like he wasn't, yeah. wasn't really a guy. I'd be like, I'm like Sherlock Holmes. You know, may have yeah. called Nostradamus a fraud, but he knew you were going to say that. Well, you know why he <laughs> predicted so much stuff. Do you know why? <laughs> Because he wrote like eighty thousand books and <laughs> kept guessing and all through everything. Oh, right. the old clocks are right. Stop clock is right twice a day. Is so that an SCTV mean? sketch where I have Notre Dame and he's like just keeps going like I knew you were gonna say that. I knew you were gonna say that too. <laughs> I don't remember that, but yeah, it sounds right. Um This guy I, actually I, has more in common with Apollo from Who Mourns for Ananias than I guess. That's actually what I was thinking. Excuse me, play the step children, yeah. it's a little different. Um I was at conflating the two, I'm, I was totally thinking of uh, yeah. him. Words were out of names, I mean, but yeah, <laughs> he, had I, a, I, he had an organ or something in him that gave him superpowers. And Mangus has a crystal in his head or something. So, yeah, I yeah, I do maintain that Mangus is a very scary and should be taken seriously. But it's sort of like, as soon as they find out he's not God, then it's like, oh well, this guy's a bungler. Let's trap him in a hole. <laughs> let's let him bungle around, derp. Let's bungle him. <laughs> He's, he did. He, he bungled everything. He could yeah, just did bungle everything. <laughs> all he had to do was wear a light around his belt, so there was always light. I guess, right? He could have carried a flashlight. <laughs> yeah. Why did he just a strap flashlight. a flashlight to his head, and he'd always be yeah. good, right? <laughs> yep. 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 No problem. Um, or learn to fly. That's like huh. the guy from uh, uh, first season who was absorbing light from the walls and everything. Um, Mateo, yeah, well, murderer guys, <laughs> yeah. Know. Oh, well, yeah, murdering force people. Of, yeah, right. Yeah, force, force of life. life. Yeah, was yeah, even McShane? Was it murdering yes. people? Or was it yeah, okay? Yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah, that alien wanted a bunch of light, so it. Yeah, maybe maybe that that guy was friends with this guy. Who knows? But yeah, I, I um, Brian, I think you were alluding to it. But when I was rambling on about New Age cassettes last week, uh, Magus has made like twenty of them. I'm sure. <laughs> you know last week we were talking about that one piece of music on planet d when he was wandering around it was very what'd you call it uh tangerine dreamish yeah they opened this episode with that same piece of music yeah, yeah. and i'm still looking at my 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 soundtrack going it's still not on my soundtrack damn it i have to go buy another version of the soundtrack to get groovy music man what does this one have yeah. I, I saw i there saw was a some there yeah there's something like basically this is i think that uh this is the only it says this is the only year two music or sorry only year two episode with incidental music from a library by Robert mm -hmm. Farnun played during the campfire scene, which How I think beautiful that's the soft focus. Night. Yes, the soft focus lens. Mm. The but soft yeah, focus um, lens music. Yes, <laughs> I think this this episode, other than that, is entirely reused from other episodes. It says the metamorph and the Tabor where I'm looking, mm. but there was yeah, something I'm not going to trust being, that. There's that something that about piece, this being though, aired from... last in yeah. uh, oh. in the U.S., but I don't know if that's accurate or not because I wasn't able to find any backup sources for that. But they're doing all those needle drops at the end of season one, right? <laughs> there was something about there was something about it being the last episode aired, and also about a bunch of distributors skipping skipping the Tabor. Mm. Like the Tabor was going to be the last episode, and this was instead. Oh, okay. That'd be a you weird. Can't, can't wait to end the Tabor. I was more thinking you can't end on the Tabor. <laughs> Please, <laughs> that would no. be really frustrating. Happy endings with the Tabor. <laughs> well, I guess. I guess if you have to end your series, you might as well end with the dumbest thing possible, so you never, you never. Hey, a lot like of it has anywhere to go. OG Star Trek's done that multiple times. Enterprise, the original series, they all ended with uh, relative poopy shows. Yeah. <laughs> wasn't, Enter wasn't enterprise sort of a version of it was all just a dream no it's it's it's, it's 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 all just a tng holodeck episode yeah i was trying to avoid spoiling the specific thing i guess it just doesn't Nobody matter if cares. i spoil honestly if they'd stuck that in the middle of the season it would have been fine but yeah and the the 
being the last is what makes everyone hate it. Um, well, yeah, because Voyager did that a bunch where it was like Lieutenant Broccoli was doing weird holodeck stuff like he like he does. Mm. Where he was you, hanging you out with Voyager people. You haven't seen the worst of what he does in the holodeck. Oh, no, really? <laughs> he did some terrible stuff in the holodeck. I know, but they can't put on screen with the worst of it, can they? Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that the episodes at the end of the production are the last ones that were aired in the U.S. Because I seem to remember yeah. those that group of episodes. That, yeah, I think that is, was not right. That's not where I right. two or three of them are actually kind of interesting, I think, and then you know some maybe less so. But mm. um. <laughs> some of these double production episodes, it also seems like depending on where you look, they're flipped. Technically, we're kind of doing it the wrong way because um, I think if you go by the days Helena says, you should like switch a couple episodes. But I, I've just decided. I will do what the A and E box says. The A and E box controls mm. my my life concerning <laughs> podcast nineteen ninety nine. So, well, here's some other interesting trivia. The, the opening, the exact opening from this episode, was used for one of those movies where they edited two season one episodes together. Like they just dubbed it over it. Hey, creative <laughs> that's, editing. That's how little it. That. That's how little it means. How many days? Um, <laughs> I, I got. I got to get all those TV movie things. I've yeah. never watched any of them. I went looking for him a few weeks ago. It's not that easy, unfortunately. So it's not as easy as finding the show itself. Mm. There's a, I think there's a box set of all four of them or something, but it's probably region four or something in Australia. I don't know. I, I think yeah, I, did it, I did it support. after the actual show last week. So I guess I'll read the A&E plot description for New Adam, New Eve, which we I think Mark was laughing for two minutes. Yeah, after, right, yesterday. this is. This is bonkers. I don't know who's writing these, but this is great. Yeah, on the set, the season one ones like make sense, but all these season two ones are insane sounding. The heralded he has chosen John, Maya, Helena, and Tony to be transported to paradise. How are these four going to fight God who exalts? For you, this is the first day of creation. So just make sure to get that on proper air. <laughs> So I wonder if my A and E box set has that on it. I don't remember that whacked out description. <laughs> I guess I could go look. Stand by. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess we could start thinking about where this episode breaks down, or, or unless I'm going to say this is. Takes. Oh, this is a twenty percent soft focus sci fi and eighty percent soft core sci fi. Oh, okay. You are making a distinction there. How nice. Okay, because I was just like, okay, one hundred. <laughs> 100% soft core for, for this one. <laughs> there's, um, <laughs> there's nothing. There's nothing here to hang your hat on. With, with I mean, okay, there's buzz kills. You know, technically, but, they sort of explain how a hologram works. So that's like, uh, okay. One yeah. percent hard sci-fi for when they technically explain how a hologram works. It I still do. sounds like a wizard in the. I have end. appeared from behind the moon. Okay, here we go. Ooh. <laughs> Wizard. Oh, uh, let's see. Okay, did they write? Well, I got these like dual. On. I got these by boxes. Remember, I don't know if you. Oh wow, them. those are yeah. super old score, aren't they? These nice. are the original A and E ones. I say they have the same. Well, yeah. They wouldn't have written worse ones. Um, yeah, but yeah, I, I was just I'm just going to play in Jane 100 because there's nothing scientific in this. Um, th this is fantasy. I mean, this is not science fiction mm -hmm. in this episode, which is probably because we view this as a science fiction thing. So when greeted with this we enjoy the episode but you just sit there like poking holes in it because it's goofy fantasy in the end you know <laughs> well we we associate science fiction with tension and anger and there is tension and anger in this episode it's just you're just frustrated because you're dealing with this bungler who is the just bungler who <laughs> just bungled you into a bungle weird you key party on in space which is okay, here the does okay, it? here's 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 new Adam and Eve. Okay, a self-proclaimed creator of humanity offers the Alphans a new Eden, but what if they refuse? That doesn't sound at all like the Lear box set. <laughs> no, mine sounds mm -hmm. like yeah. Why is like why is there so whacked out? I don't understand. Three languages. <laughs> yeah, probably was translated three times back and forth, and it came out like that. Maybe have a bootleg. It's just weird. Maybe oh. A and E bootleg nice. the show. Alphans to Earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Alphans seek exile. Okay, no, no, no. And every and disc has... Very, yeah, none of them are that weird. None of them are anywhere near that weird. <laughs> every single disc has the quote, it's the struggle for survival that makes monsters of us all. Dorzak. And that's on every disc. It's like they don't put different quotes <laughs> on the different discs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is the legit set. Okay, I'm, I'm looking, looking, at, I'm looking at the Dorzak. box. Uh, I'm not looking at the actual Dorzak. case. So I'd have to like dive into the box. 
<laughs> so, uh, all right, here we go. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, give, give us give us the case. What's on the back of the case? And they get really skimpy with the foot. Notice that the cases all have the same picture on them after a certain mm -hmm. point because they skimp. Same. Out. Oh, oh, same with these. They they all look exactly the same. There are Blu-ray oh, versions that have better. Wait a minute. Blingier, um, packaging and stuff. But we're, we're I got the old school stuff okay. here. Okay, here's new enemy. Amidst a heralding of trumpets and a display of light and color, he appears. Ah. He's back. All, mm. all moon base systems cease except those he wishes. John, Helena, Koning, and Maya are chosen and are transported to a lush paradise. With his arms raised, he exalts. For you, this is the first day of creation. Now, how does one fight God? Oh, so mine is like the weirdly edited version of Yours that. Yours is like a like an edited down version of that. Okay, it, it did come from these things. Okay, yeah, that's weird. There is a legend about those who traveled space to spread the concept of peace and goodwill. Now, one thousand years later, is it libel if I call someone Alan Carter? Will unbox packaging the proof. department lazy? <laughs> no. Pandora's box has been opened. Abstract is the prize. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I mean, they're in the same order and everything, I think. Wait and, a minute, Catacombs, uh, which, I don't know what the next one is on this, but this is... A.B. Chrysalis is next on mine. A.B. Chrysalis? Yeah, okay, yeah, Catacombs of the Moon is next after that one. Okay. And anyway, the, um, while, while you were getting your box, uh, I was like 100 softcore. Mark was willing to give a 1% hard sci-fi because they tried to explain a hologram. Uh <laughs> mm -hmm. And 20% um, soft focus. <laughs> i'd give it uh maybe 10 percent for trying to explain the astrophysics of having a moon bigger than the planet <laughs> trying to keep it together <laughs> and uh there's some uh man there's some major eugenics going on this episode when you think of, i mean i'm reminded of good old dr cabot rolling back on ultima thule like, oh, I'm just going to run experiments on everybody and create mutant monsters, blah, blah, blah. Bit of Dr. So Moreau. Was... Yeah. Dr. Okay. Moreau. Very Dr. Moreau. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so <laughs> create an that. army of atomic supermen. <laughs> Always So that. you can throw some of some of that in on, I don't know where that falls on the hard sci-fi scale. Um... <laughs> yeah, but it's like a guess... laundry monster and a gorilla. Um, yeah, but okay, the gorilla suit, uh, the intestine man suit, I just call him intestine. It looks like he's wearing his intestine intestines on the man. inside of his body. Yeah. Um, I think that's uh, the idea. Yeah, God. Yeah, yeah, and he had the giant, like, like wart the size of his head on his head. I don't know what that was about. Well, that's um, why it was kill me, kill me, kill me, let me die. No, don't. No, thank you. I cannot, I cannot no, live. thank you. No, thank no, you, thank but you. I shall die with this. <laughs> Oh, there's my notes. Um, so this is all about eugenics. Okay, I guess I agree. Yeah. That's right after I wrote, I want to be a cosmic magician someday. Cosmic magician. Mm. Yeah, it's pretty soft sci-fi. I mean, also soft focus, as we've mentioned several times now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, specifically, oh, that, Mark said 80% soft core and 20% percent Giant soft Gila monsters straight from 1959, you know, in the cave. That was pretty... Yeah, stop motion. They didn't do that, but they had to go for... No. You know, filming the job, little tiny lizards and mm -hmm. making them look. Is, is Komodo so, dragon the same thing as a Gila monster? No, they're um, bigger. Okay, because these are technically Komodo dragons, according to the. Uh, oh, what are they? Saying. Yeah. Oh. Well, well you live closer to them than we do. Mm -hmm. You tell mm -hmm. us. <laughs> I'll tell you. <laughs> go, go, go to the island of Komodo and find mm -hmm. those dragons. I just um, read about the Cat Shrine Island. There's like 20 times more cats than people on the island. So what else did I write? Oh, right. fastest eagle flight ever. Yeah, because it didn't actually fly. <laughs> Nickel Except from the left. So I like I that crazy? the eagle was taking off from the the crevice opening directly under the eagle and taking off. Okay, I'll give it a point for that. That was pretty cool effect. <laughs> <laughs> pretty cool model work. So am I crazy or does the swinger plot just really completely stop and nobody ever comes back to it again? There's yeah. just a couple of kisses and yeah. then is is dropped harder than they got other fish Harder to than fry. a bungler into a pit. Nothing to There's... ruin your key party like some mutants. Because <laughs> I, I have this weird <laughs> this weird part of my notes earlier on where, uh, where you know, uh, Magus is giving him the pitch and Koenig says, well, Maya happens to be very beautiful. And then Magus cuts him off and says, but she would choose Helena. And I write there, he is convinced, but I am not. <laughs> <laughs> The needle drop they needed was, um, you know, uh, 
the try the Jefferson Airplane's triad song. Got David Crosby kicked out of the I, birds. <laughs> I think I, uh, I want to know, given all the cattiness we've heard, is what Barbara Thane thought of the script. Oh, you gotta go get to kiss Catherine in this script. How did that happen? I have to go kiss Tony. Mm. <laughs> I want. I, I kind of, I kind of wanted somebody to be like, "Hey, what the?" Like, I wanted, <laughs> I wanted Koenig to slap Tony just once, or something <laughs> like that. You know, like he could have done uh, it. There was no static between them. It would have been well. You well, know, none of them kissed each other in the presence of the other couple, so it's not like anybody witnessed it actually happening. So I guess that's what feels missing from this episode. I wanted I think some. What, yeah. drama out of that there was no think, drama it was just you get a kiss and then you get a kiss and then you fight then a, a frankenstein is fighting an ape man yeah <laughs> intestine man. so basically <laughs> what happens on new eden stays on new eden yep yep well i episodic I guess television for them this is still <laughs> overall this is still overall what i would like more of if this season is going to be stupid i want it to be like this fun <laughs> rollicking stupid if, if i'm correct someone bothers to try writing smarter scripts right at the tail end but uh you might, you might get a few more hits yeah. of this we haven't gotten to space warp yet and and there are no <laughs> parrots on this planet which no is parrots good disappointing. point disappointing that's surprising yeah I, I i and oh and and also it's worth pointing out the effects at the end where like valleys are opening up great effects like I, honestly, I was mm -hmm. like, I, I wanted to go back and look at Matter of Life and Death and see if it looked that good because it was like this, this, this is some good stuff actually. How many uh, planets has Kodnik destroyed now? I don't know how many episodes have there been. There was the War that Games many. planet. He blew that. Well, of course <laughs> that was that was a thought experiment, but he did blow it up. <laughs> um, there's a few others. Oh, Metamorph. Okay, he blew up Maya's planet. Um, <laughs> this collision course count as blowing up a planet when they touch it and it goes away. Well, it did go away, so yes, <laughs> but he, but that wasn't okay. really. I mean, that wasn't really a choice. I mean, that that was the thing. Koenig went nuts making it seem like he was making yeah. a choice, but they, they, I mean, they were going to hit that planet. I mean, there was no real way around it. Well, and um, let's see. Well, he let's messed up some societies the like episodes. the Darians. He messed up some Darians. Okay, society. yeah, Darians. Um, Breakaway. Up. He destroyed Earth. Matter right. of life and death. He destroyed that planet. <laughs> Black mm. Sun. Some planet probably got destroyed and all that. Uh, ring around <laughs> the moon. Did uh, that's brain eye planet. Yeah, that got destroyed. I don't remember. I don't remember. Anyway, or I'm just Earth saying he's bound. a planet killer. Yeah, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's fun to. Oh, there's Guardian he's, of Fury. That one. Co that Fury got blown up. Yeah, um, Fury blew up real good. Koenig is is now um is now Galacticus basically. Galactus. Yeah, he's, he is. He eats planets. He is, <laughs> he's so bungler he's a planet in killer. terms of legend koenig is a much more violent god than magus <laughs> so do you is that why they didn't let let them come down to the planet in uh the last sunset or uh what was the other one yes There's a couple of other ones yeah where don't go come to our do planet you'll make no, them blow up i'm yeah, pretty sure that was exactly what they were doing keep these people away so they don't blow us up or something well, you let's know? see the last enemy they were already shooting at each other but i don't think he he didn't blow up worse. their planet he anyway. blew up everyone from that one planet he he <laughs> murdered the entire ship full of beathans they're all dead that's so a ship like, though but but think about it this way if they were like the final line of defense against the other planet then then their planet's dead man it's okay. gone well, the moon was like, on its way. They don't know what happened. Their telescopes don't see that far. I really I want to declare... see the map around the moon base alpha showing where all the wrecked ships are. Not just the eagles, but the the, the Stasius, Stasius uh, Gwent, uh, <laughs> the Delta. I, um... <laughs> I'm pretty sure nobody yeah. bothered doing with that in the 70s. So maybe by now someone's done that. Maybe. I don't know. Well, they could have at least scrapped all that stuff and got the metal from it to build more eagles or something. So. They had a, a new section of moon base. <laughs> yeah, because they keep losing yeah. those too. So there you go. I yeah, I just feel like there was there was a bunch of scrap material that they uh um yeah, uh, I guess my, my only other note here is just uh they're fighting to the sound of gentle disco again. <laughs> yep. Weird fight. I have a uh, space Jesus is like a reverse vampire. He has to leave at sunset mm. instead of arrive after sunset. <laughs> oh yeah. My planet uh, is I, plentiful what, with mustache wax. I like the idea that maybe he's just afraid of the dark. Right. Yeah. 
He's just he's just so afraid of the dark. He loses. His well, Tony says that was he afraid of the dark? Yeah, he's exactly. Like, yeah, he is kind of. <laughs> I like that. I mean, what I, I I like that better than he gets this power by making holograms go at the exact speed of light or whatever. Oh, I have know, most that's... awkward theological discussion ever between you know horny Koenig and horny <laughs> horny Maya, and he yeah. says things like, uh, "Your theory is great that uh, God it was just a, a name for God." <laughs> I kind of, I did kind of like, sound like a whole... twelve-year-old trying to have a conversation with a girl. <laughs> her whole, yeah, her whole swerve was just like, oh well, you know, I get it. You people just think that this thing is this, and it's not. Anyway, <laughs> you're not as smart as psycho people of psychon who keep a bunch of slaves. Comparative interstellar theology or something. That was something she took in high school, I guess. I don't know. Maya knows everything, uh, including what the moon looked like from Earth, which she's never been to. Hey, she might have <laughs> watched some movies. We never see Alpins watching old movies, you know. They mm. could watch some. They have electric sitar concerts. That's canon. <laughs> yeah. They only do like public domain things, like play, you know, <laughs> Beethoven or something. <laughs> well, it's like everybody in the whole universe knows all about Earth people, even though the only thing Earth has ever sent into orbit was. The moon and the Queller Drive. They could have a moon stock. You know, McMurdo Base has ice stock. And the Star Mission in 1996. That had Brian on. Remember Brian? He was last week. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> last week's Brian. They all know about and then him. the Ultra Probe and the, Ar the, the Jupiter Arcadians. mission. And, 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 and uh, all that stuff. Yeah, all the Arcanon guy. The Uranus and, mission. And, and yeah. Earthbound guys. Earth got our own. Yeah, Earth got dragon, Earth bound guys. the dragon's Everyone. dogma, the dragon's dogma, dragon's <laughs> domain. <laughs> That's the ultra probe. Man. What if what if it's just been that that guy, like that dragon, the monster? It's just been going all over the place and just being like, Rrr. I assume like that's waving what's going tentacles on. around, and he's just telling using like tele telepathic language to tell everybody that everybody on Earth sucks. <laughs> what did you call that um, creature that might turn into a lizard man? Oh, he, and they looked more amphibious, yeah. Maya thing? Fought, fought. Uh, I uh, thought Koning had a situation under control with his laser, but he must have lost it when he asked Maya to join the fight. <laughs> oh, and did he notice that he called her good girl again after she transformed back? Good girl, Maya. It's like, stop that. <laughs> some people are some people are into that. Stop That's a patronizing whole thing. Maya. That's what it's called saying. GG. <laughs> GG Kink. G -G? Yeah, people G -G are just King? really into it. Call, call, some people just want to want the good girl or the good boy one of those uh, i i totally get it um one piece of trivia that i left out because i thought it was just sad was that it said something along the lines of that oh landau and shell had very similar senses of humor and she related a story where uh the stunt man who was the lizard man took that took the head off and he said i don't know why he bothered taking the head off he looks the same under the mask and she laughed for like an hour straight and couldn't do any more shoots couldn't do any shots because she was <laughs> laughing at how mean martin lando is to that one guy wow ah, don't be anyway well now i guess now i guess it is in the, in the uh, trivia <laughs> i guess i brought it it's, anyway it's, it's, it's a little isolated highlighted section now you like double trivia it that also could be false but you know. double trivial <laughs> That sure, that sure sounds like something that someone would admit to without realizing how bad it makes them sound. Mm. <laughs> anyway, I think the lizard man is beautiful. Good for him. I didn't know what he was supposed to be. I called him Amphiba Maya. He said he comes back, what, five more times? So I Yeah, guess different didn't creatures. He's a guy. Too much. <laughs> I, well, I think that's sort of the thing where he's like, the this is your new guy, and then Landau's just going to take him down a peg because... Mm. Like, He's what are you going to be a regular? He's the star of the show. You're not. That's what how Maya chooses which creature she's going to turn into in a drop of a hat. Oh, what's the best thing I know of to fight a giant, you know, mutant ape? <laughs> uh, a panther. Well, it's at least she was. She was. Uh, I don't want to use the word useful. She, <laughs> her transformation served some purpose this episode, and it wasn't just turn into something and get like knocked off a cliff and then give up which seems to be a lot of her transformations well being a mouse last week worked out okay yeah that was great and being captain 
uh, Michael. Mm. Even though it seems like they could have been a lot more efficient about. I and mean, let's face it, she's only things. been practically using her powers of transformation for the past three months or so, right? Because on <laughs> yeah, sorry, right. gone, oh, she didn't yeah. really need to do. I mean, why she didn't need to strategize with her or anything, right? I bet when she was on Psycon, she just turned into a, a pile of goo and hung out in a bucket like Odo. Yeah, why because not? This is fun. That's why <laughs> wouldn't you? It's comfortable. What else is fun? Uh, finding us on patreon.com slash podcastio podcastius. That one word, there's no dash in between it, right? I don't know. Anyway, there's, <laughs> I don't think, there's... I don't know. I don't know, but you well, know, you can, can find out, you, you can, can tell you search, you no search dash. Google for, you search Google for Patreon podcastio podcastius and AI will tell you to put a brick inside of your cake that you're baking. But if you actually go to the actual site, you can give us money for server bills. You can click other podcasts like to listen to, like uh, Films and Phil Assist, Kane of Podcasts, Time Enough Podcasts, but the Twilight Zone, Luke Loves Pokemon about Pokemon, Hyrule Field Report, probably over. But you can listen to it anyway. Game, game, show, game, show about games, occult Disney about Disney. And I believe that is all of the podcasts. Okay, let's put Mark back in the uh, dark then. Back into the dark with you. Oh no, don't put me in here with this bungler. <laughs> okay, there's a pause. I can spot that. <laughs> oh <Okay. laughs> yeah. Bungler. So yeah, uh, next week, this time would probably be fine if you want to do AB Chrysalis. A B chrysalis. Well, actually, hmm. yeah, June fourth. I think so. Um, I'll put it down as a maybe because you sound unsure. Mm. Uh, well, yeah, I'm doing a Twilight Zone with John on Tuesday, uh, my Tuesday Monday night, your Monday night. But then it seems like Norm's maybe out of the picture for the moment, so he might end up doing Mission Log Live. In which case, we'd have to move that. Wait, what? Uh, have I, am I behind on the, the live show? The live show. Uh, oh. He was going to do it because it was his week off from the live show, but I'm not sure if it's actually going to be his week off from the live show. Anyway, yeah, put, oh. put, put it in the fourth and hopefully nothing changes. I think okay. Norman is, um, he's got some shoulder problems or something. I, I was trying to pick up on that from, uh, because it sounds like they're actually record he's recording an episode with somebody else <laughs> this week. I I forget to listen to all the bonus material and even though <laughs> I have access to it, I just I, I do the thing where I just have my podcast app on my phone and I just mindlessly click on it and I should do more than that. And and I should really show up from a live stuff and I'd fucking forget to and I Oh no, this is a podcast live show they do every Monday night. But they alternate. Like, yeah, the podcast live show. Oh, it's about discovery, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, well, that's why I don't listen to that. Yeah, if you're not discovering, then there wouldn't be a reason <laughs> no. to listen to it. But <laughs> Well, next week's is the last one since it's the last episode of Discovery, right? That right. airs this week. So, <clears throat> yeah. And anyway, yeah. my point is uh, there could be a schedule change or two. So I guess, you know, anticipate that. But we'll just do it how it makes sense at the moment. So hmm. Can't wait to find out that everybody was just on the holodeck in uh, Lower Decks the whole time <laughs> for Discovery. Mm -hmm. I guess it's just a hol or whatever a holodeck in Deep Space Nine. No, that's was, my the uh, whole theory. Was... Yeah, <laughs> the whole that's my theory was... about all of Lower Decks is that it takes place in like a warp field bubble or something. And it's not part of the Star Trek reality because it's a cartoon reality. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like Lower Decks is the no, most they're all in the because... same universe. I have no problem with that because <laughs> Lower Decks references more stuff than any other series ever has times like twenty. Yeah. It's like that. And that's it's the that thing about it. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it, but it's not, it's not traumatic Star Trek. It's a basically a big period of Star mm -hmm. Trek in a way. So, how do you well, reconcile also that had... with being part of Star Trek? It, it can't be both in my mind, but that's just me. <laughs> I, I've gone just... about that, gone on about that at length. So, I'll shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh... I, I get it. And I do prefer the Orville, but at the same time, I prefer, I like fast paced snarky cartoons so it sort of is just oh don't get me wrong i love lower another decks. part of my yeah 
but when you start throwing those characters into other series, it's like, well, <laughs> it's kind of like having characters from Board of the Rings show up in Lord of the Rings, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing, the funny thing is, I have friends who hate, who, who like have tried watching several different Star Treks and just could not get into it. Like they've made the effort, made the effort. Uh, aside from they only like Wrath of Khan and nothing else, but they ended up lo loving Lower Decks. So you can also mm. love Lower Decks not knowing any of the references at all. Just mm. <laughs> kind of funny. No, it's a it's 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 a fun show. I do I do enjoy it. And sorry, it's yeah. Going I'm not. Away. Sorry, I'm not. I'm not trying to suggest that. Whatever. I'm not. I'm. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm not hating on Lower Decks. I just think it exists yeah. in like a different space than the mm -hmm. rest of Star Trek. It's. it's no, I'm, in, uh, I'm insane enough. I'll put theater it in the same of the box. absurd, if you will. You know what I mean? Yeah. What's that? <clears throat> I'll put it on the same box. I don't care. <laughs> I can. Have, I feel I can like have it, it. maybe it's just a thing where every time you're watching Lower Decks, you just like took like some poppers and went to the holodeck to watch it, so everything moves really fast because you're on drugs. Mm. Like that would make sense so, if they so have the, poppers in the future, right? That'd be a good name for the show, Star Trek. You're on drugs. <laughs> they just call it Star Trek <laughs> poppers. <laughs> I don't think that's how poppers work anyway. I think that was you never like, watched you know. any Prodigy, did you? I watched the first, uh, the pilot, that's the two part pilot, and not... I could not get very into it because the main character was really annoying to me he was like beast boy from from teen titans and for some reason that really annoyed you got to give it a few more episodes than that that I, is i, I like give it a few some of it yeah. yeah i like some of the characters but that character specifically really annoyed me so i was like i think uh, by episode six it's properly star trek it just it takes a few episodes to do that properly <laughs> well i also was annoyed when i started watching the orville with seth mcfarlane and they put him they put him in the background pretty quickly <laughs> they was five episodes where where you were not seeing him a lot which was very smart i mean it's not that i don't like seth mcfarland i just think that like that works better with him not as much in it mm, right. i don't know how else to explain it besides that it's kind of but like also, picard put picard you know in the background a little bit and let the other characters do all the acting and <laughs> having all the troubles someone's yeah. gotta do the running and it's not gonna be an 80 year old patrick stewart <laughs> i i liked this is, i've had this discussion with matt but i don't know if i've had it with you brian where i like i kind of liked the first season of picard better because it felt like they were trying to do something interesting and different except for it didn't really pay off that well but like i it, it wasn't it didn't feel like he was the main character of the show for the first half of that and i was like that's kind of cool it's about all this other stuff <laughs> but, yeah I didn't like the second season and the third season, the third season, even though I think it was too heavy on nostalgia, everybody from next generation is a better actor now than they were then. So <laughs> the, just that is like, uh, that like, is pretty uh, much all in on, on that one. And maybe it is partly because it for a nostalgia factor, but Hey, if it works, it works, you know, Gates McFadden was fucking awesome in that. Like she's, yeah, she's so like, yeah, she's such a heavy presence in that just, everybody yeah <laughs> yeah i can't think of anyone that didn't really bring on their you know increased a game even if they and haven't the man... acted for 20 years you know because freaks doesn't yeah. act anymore <laughs> he knocked it oh out. yeah i mean yeah but the the thing that bothered me about that was at the end it was just the borg again the, like... yeah when i did my rewatch you know <laughs> yeah. that's the thing when you know where it's going it's not as annoying but yes when i first saw it live and i was like nah nah you're not, really <laughs> yeah i said well i didn't know i didn't spoil myself ahead of time so i definitely said no nah, no nah, really when i was watching it same here yeah um, i watched it day of release so of course i didn't get spoiled but i watched it 2024 anyway uh i gotta get going because i gotta pee but uh, okay i'll see Have you guys maybe time. next tuesday yeah and i'll see you matt in 24, 24. hours for this dust but dust bootie dust bootie all right <laughs> okay let me hit the record bye everybody